Okay, guys, so the Battlefield 5 reveal has, uh, has happened, and uh, it's time for me to compare Battlefield 5 with uh, Call of Duty uh, Black Ops 4, as I do you know, in previous years, uh, when these two giants come out around the same time with their own stuff. So, so the reveal for Call of Duty... You know, disappointed me highly, but the structure of it, the 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 audience reacting and and the bluster of it was good. Uh, you know, it was this traditional sort of press conference, you know, stage thing. Um, and over here on Battlefield uh, Five side, you got Trevor Noah making jokes and and kind of taking away sometimes uh, of of the different features being revealed. Uh, and, and then the audience is like dead quiet. There's there's no clapping. I at one point forgot there was an audience until they started clapping when when they said, "Okay, now it's time to show the trailer." Uh, and then the, like I guess there was a clap applaud message. So I just think that the messaging was real messed up, and that that sort of reveal event was done in a very awkward way. They're they're like the sit down, like they're on the Daily Show, and then they do cutaways to like super interesting information, and then okay, I'm back to you. Like we're on a news show. Like I don't know who who produced that, but I gotta be honest with you, it felt very amateur, and 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 just I didn't like it because here's the thing. Before that event, they did a three-hour press event and influencers event, and they gave us like. I've never seen the passion and detail directly from the developers as they talk about their individual uh, jobs and features and they show the animations and how they've improved and they show this and that and they show slideshows. It blew me away. This Battlefield 5, guys, when you get your hands on it, it, it is like, wow. And, and I wrote a lot of things. I wrote 10 pages of notes. Let me just show you this. Here is 10 pages of notes that I took from this reveal uh, while I'm watching it. 10 pages of notes, all this stuff, and kill cams. There's so much in this fucking game with the visual, the Tides of War visual customization. Notice I put this in red. I spotted a, a little legendary, something that said legendary, and I was like, oh, yeah, I got to follow up on that. And, and, and so... Everything that you could have possibly wanted to know, they said there, and they had little things. So, and then to, and I was like, wow. By the end of the three hours, I was like, this was long. And they had like intermissions, two intermissions. And I was like, but that was great. And anybody that plays Battlefield, anybody that's a video game fan, that's a gamer, I don't even think you need to be a hardcore game. Okay, three hours, you need to be hardcore. But, but, but at least it's there and you could take it in chunks. I just want them to throw that up. Uh, you know, if they filmed it, put that online. But I don't think they're going to do that. And 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 I think that they're and, – and I was hoping to myself that the press reveal or the public reveal would be just as good. It, it's not. It, there was just uh, – I don't know if the messaging just got mixed. So I'm going a, I'm to a do it. I'm going to just give you all of my freaking notes because I took all of these notes, and, and I don't know if they're going to go anywhere. So here is everything about Battlefield Five that we know currently, and it is – so much, okay. So let's let me just just go through it together. So they opened that, and I'm just gonna give you a rundown of the conference because these notes are scatterbrained. It's gonna be a little difficult here. So if you are a hardcore fan of Battlefield, stick around. The rest of you, I understand if you're not gonna be able to take it, but it's some really cool stuff, okay. Uh, if you're a fan of war, uh, you know war shooters and things like that. So here we go. Uh, they started out by start talking about how they were proud. You know, Battlefield 1942, extremely proud of it. The World War II returns. Why are they re why are they returning? Well, they started there, and they got, and and of course now we're in 2018, and there's been a lot of technological advancements since then. So they're going back to the roots, and they started challenging themselves about war, what World War II, what they could do now, um, and and how they can make it different and exciting again. And from what I've seen, they've accomplished that. Now, obviously, I'm gonna wait for a review to give a full, uh, you know, confidence in saying that. But from what I've seen, I think it's really gonna nail it. Now, would I have rather have seen uh, a modern uh, modern take i kind of wanted like you know vietnam or something like maybe even alternate history using sort of the vietnam era war stuff or, or operation flashpoint stuff if you remember that uh game a long time ago you know just to, to explore different time periods um yeah i would have wanted that but if we're gonna go back to world war ii i'm glad it's dice that's doing it and i'm glad they're doing it in this way and adding a, a whole variety of weapons and, and being able to do world war ii with our current technology so I'm into it. I'm excited about World War II. 
It's going to be a journey around the globe. They say, and there's going to be some bullshit, you know, PR terms in here. They they claim it's going to be the richest and deepest and most immersive Battlefield Five. That's the same kind of stuff you'd find in any of these sort of press conferences. But then what 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 blew me away, and I didn't quite understand it at first, is you've got a, a little section. I wrote it down. My soldiers, my company. So you're creating your own company with new unique soldiers and vehicles that will go on the journey with you. Now at first I thought like, wait, wait is this like an RPG? experience or these guys going to be on the actual battlefield and I, I got that impression through the three hours but I don't think that's what it was I think they're just saying in this section you create your own soldiers that you will use individually in the game and stuff like that so I don't know if that was kind of mixed messaging or 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 sort of trying to say something that, that it really isn't or if I just am a dumbass and didn't understand it but that's kind of the way it sounded but I think it's just a whole section where you'll be able to have deep customization like never before and from what I saw in the customization they showed many many options there is a ton of customization here uh, that we've not seen in Battlefield um, some of the recent Battlefields like some of the things is each weapon has like six or seven individual parts and they they sort of did a flyby that you could put all sorts of things on it skins engravings uh, the branches you know World War II kind of theme stuff uh, you know the weeds from like sniper guillotine suit kind of stuff. Um, I hope and I suggested that maybe we could get some carvings of kills in the guns or dog tanks hanging off of it like we've seen in Black Light. I, I want that kind of customization in it and it looks like we're going to get some of those things. Um, then they talked about how in their single player campaign they're going to be doing unseen, untold, unplayed stories, and they're going to portray those elements in the war stories because the major battles, the ones that we all know, they can take care of that in the new Tides of War mode, which is sort of this meta mode. Um, I was hoping, at first I thought it was going to be like Axis and Allies, and you've got this meta map where you you push back and forth between the German soldiers. It's exactly what I wanted and what I suggested in Call of Duty World War II, and that's the game I'm waiting for and excited for, but I don't think, and again, my mine was running away with me. I don't think that's what it is. It's more, it, it's, it's that, but without the map. Okay, because uh, every week or every three weeks or whatever it is, they can provide us a new set of like five different things that you can play through a new grand operation that's themed for the fall of Europe or, or you know, they talked about examples like uh, the Blitzkrieg, you could have the Polish invasion where players are just, what would that look like in Battlefield 5 where everybody's just on tanks and going at it and stuff, or one side isn't on tanks and one side is on tanks and a Blitzkrieg, you know, that, that would be really cool. And so they can do these individual battles and take you all over the world. They're going to do that in, in war stories, but they're also going to do it in the operations, in the grand operations, in the Arctic. And I saw avalanches. I was like, okay, so this is going to, there's an avalanche in that concept art. Is that Levolution? Are we, we're going to see that, right? Um, and yes, dynamic weather is returning. They say they're going to uh, turn that up a little bit because that was exciting and, uh, and added some dynamic uh, range to the battle. So that's going to be back. And so I was really excited about that. They, they talked about North of Arctic Circle, battle across the Frenchy countryside, mechanized armies, total devastation of the city of Rot Rotterdam. Maybe I, I got that wrong. Uh, the rugged heat of the North African desert uh, and take part in the biggest battles ever fought is the, the, you know, the branding that they use. Um, so let's see. The, uh, your squad is the key to success. Your company will evolve with you. Decide how they play, how they look. Um, you, they mentioned conquest, team deathmatch, domination. Uh, but one of the big things is these new feature called fortifications. Uh, so you'll be, because there's a lot of destruction and better and new destruction, I saw a tank rolling through a, a building and just the building crumbling and looked so good, so realistic, so awesome. Then they talked about when the, when the tank fires the cannon shot in, in previous battlefields, there'd be a nice impressive effect. It al was always impressive. But here the physics are also correct. We're impressed and then it blows inward otherwise or another example was they fired the shot through the window it exploded in the house and then this time the house exploded outward instead of using the same canned animation that they would have used last time so that that, that was really cool and so what that is is uh, they talk about fortifications where you can counter the destruction 
okay, and fortify the flags and strong points. Uh, and then they, they supplement this with the new towing mechanic where you can tow things and vehicles. So there's going to be lots of anti-aircraft gun emplacements, uh, is, uh, stationary gun emplacements that are really good, uh, machine gun emplacements. And you can, you can tow these things on any vehicle. Uh, well, most any vehicle. I'm not sure. Any vehicle. You know, tanks will be able to do it. Transports will be able to do it. And while you're driving, you can have somebody sit in that thing and fire it. And you see some of that in the trailer. And they talked about creating these little cr trailers. <laughs> that, that you can drive around of, of, of vehicles that are towing until you get to the position that your your forces are combined trying to make a fortification together and set set up the stationary things there. It sounded so cool. It sounded like this is the single uh, addition that, to Battlefield 5, and it makes so much sense because that's how wars actually were. You got to fortify the positions that are valuable, and it just makes encountering these uh, fortifications that much more interesting. Also, the tied in squads. Squads have uh, way more importance here. When you spawn, you're spawning in a squad. Squad leaders have more responsibilities. They've got radios that they can call in. They showed so many different things uh, that you can call in. I'm, I'm seeing if I wrote any of them down. It happened so dang quick. Um, I found it. Okay, so I wrote down a V1 or JBT, uh, JB2 rockets. So V1 rockets, and you saw that in the trailer too. So if you're gonna have these big fortifications, you know, and your squad has been playing the objective and playing together and doing things right, you're gonna be able to call in, you're gonna be able to use those points to call in a V2 rocket on those positions, uh, or V1 rocket. Uh, supply drops, smoke screen barrages, heavy weapons, uh, battle pickups. And these weren't, they said these weren't specialists. They're not gonna change your class. Uh, and there's just going to be this heavy weapon that you can use while uh, while you're still your other class. So uh, that was really cool. And then they also talked about hero vehicles. You can call in this freaking badass Churchill crocodile if you're on the British side, or the Strum Tiger if you're on the German. I'm not sure if I said that right. But these tanks look so amazing because they were they they were like customized. They had all these sandbags on them and, and just. It made World War II look so beautiful and, and uh, you know, from the technology these days. So you get access to all that other stuff now and they're enhancing uh, working together in squads and spawning on each other. Another thing they talked about is how they wanted to give players and squads more information. So you'll get an over-the-head shot of what your squad mates are doing. So say you die, the new mechanic happens, you kind of sit there and you, and you can either call for help or, or let yourself bleed out. And it was brutal, dude. The dude is literally screaming. Aah! You know, like, and you hear this stuff if you're in the... The sound design is so amazing in the game, guys. It reminded me of Bad Company 2. That's how, and I love the sound design in that game. And, and since then, they've kind of changed the sounds here and there. They still sound good, but I just, I just remember that sound design being, wow, I'm going to remember this for forever because of how good that moment was crackling in the background and then the battle gets closer. That is in here. And so you, your guy's screaming for help and he's bleeding and there's constant, and that was a new thing for them that they wanted to immerse you. You, you ever play Far Cry 2? I think it was where you're in Africa where everything is constantly immersed. You're whipping up a map. You're looking at each other, the way you move and stuff. It feels like that. And I loved that game, and I love that it's here, and you're looking at your blood while you're screaming, and you could do 360 view, you know, while you're calling people over. But let's just say you kill it, you, you say, okay, I'm in a bad position, um, you, you, you bleed out. Uh, you you then get a camera where you zoom in and you're over the shoulder where what your other squad mates are doing before you spawn in on them. So you can have that battlefield situational awareness. That's probably just simulated, but they're on the radio and like you come join me uh, without even having to talk. Uh, and then they added uh, like every single soldier can now revive. So everybody is technically a medic, but you're going to be a shitty medic. It's going to take you forever. You're going to do that patching up. Remember, they want to do this first person kind of always immersed in the game. You're patching up, so you would never do that out in the open because it just takes too long and you're at risk, you're a target. Uh, medics can do it because it's a lot faster. So if you're an actual medic, there's an actual purpose. Unlike Call of Duty, Black Ops 4, which I have no idea why there's a medic. It makes no sense because the time to kill is ridiculous. It does jack shit, and they're just stuffing it in there for no reason because they need another specialist. Here, the medic actually has a purpose. You, not only can you heal lightning quick, but when you heal, you're healing them up to full health. 
health. Say, if you weren't a medic, when you heal somebody, you don't even heal them up to full health. You heal them a fraction, but you at least get them back into the battle. Um, and, and so it still has purpose like that. You can now actually grab people. You know that moment where you're dragging somebody? I think it was in Call of Duty World War II in the single player. And now and that, this felt so good. Well, now that's in multiplayer in Battlefield uh, where, you know, what, what was that map? Operation something where the, the hallways are just so small and you're, uh, you're trying to revive you. Uh, you die over and over uh, because it takes too long to revive. Well, now you can drag that person very quickly. You're dragging them and get them to safety and then re heal them. You know, and it's, it's oh, oh, great. That's going to be awesome. So what else am I writing down here? Da -la 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 -la. They talked about this. Uh, the, the, you know, they said a lot of buzz. They said a buzzword that concerned me at first: live service, live service. Uh, about the tides of operations, so that that concerned me a little bit. However, they put those to fear when they said there's no premium pass, uh, there's no paid DLC in that kind of expansions. There's no like paid expansions. They just give you the expansion. They just continue to make this uh, a, a game that evolves. You're gonna get the fall of Europe. Later on, you'll get this. Later on, you'll get that. And they'll present new weapons. And then when you participate in these campaigns, w campaigns week three, uh, I saw that you oh you can unlock a new weapon you know skin or something like that for participating in there a new banner a new badge and so that that's a clever way to keep people playing uh, and people keep people engaged with the game. I think they're going to get that right with Battlefield Five. Now, what's the catch? What's the catch, EA? Because there's always a catch. So far, I haven't found the catch yet. I'm going to keep looking. Maybe in my notes, I've got it here later. Remember that thing I highlighted red? We'll see. Um, okay, and then they showed the Battlefield trailer, and I tried to notate some of the things I noticed in the Battlefield trailer. Right away, there's a female in it, so you're going to have one ignorant, stupid, fucking disgusting side of the internet. The dark corners just start fucking freaking out over that. And then, All right, the feminists are the gender social justice. Shut the fuck up, dude. Seriously. Sh no, uh, you know what? I don't want to talk to you like that. I want to be like, man. Let's go grab a beer, pop open a beer, have a cold one. Talk about it, man. Okay, let's talk about it. Just, something's going on in your life. You need to stop reading those the, those forums and, and pull yourself out of the muck, dude. Because, yeah, I had a laugh about it, too. In Call of Duty World War II, you remember there was a black female Nazi soldier on multiplayer. So I made a, I made a joke about it. Uh, and then how there there's women on the front lines of the shores of D-Day of Normandy, beach invasion, uh, when they're opening their cards. But that was for a joke, you know. I don't. I honestly don't care. It's the fifth Battlefield game. It's the nineteenth Call of Duty. If they want to put females, what the fuck ever. Because there's so much deeper customization, I want as many customization options as possible. So I, I want a smaller hitbox with a female. You know, that's the kind of thing I think about. Uh, so I don't mind that there's females in it. Uh, so just shut up if you. It's, don't get, get away from me, you know, kind of thing. Um, it, it felt a lot more intimate in those buildings. They showed a, I think they purposefully went into that building to show there's going to be plenty of uh, buildings because one of the criticisms of Battlefield 1, maybe there wasn't a whole lot of building interaction and verticality. I think there's going to be more of that here. Uh, they showed some towing weapons in there. It's just hilarious <laughs> how over the top and ridiculous it is. It seemed like a cinematic, uh, but then they kind of mixtured it in with the gameplay later on. Um, and that's probably how the game is going to be, a mixture of cinematic. Just because graphics are so good these days, it's hard to tell. Um, but it's like, okay, Call of Duty's not doing their campaign anybody. A anybody that missed the over-the-top Call of Duty campaign, single player, can come and get it here because it looks like that's what we're getting. So I thought that was uh, nice. Uh, and just some one other thing that this year's Battlefield Five has over Call of Duty. Um, let's see, squad picks up grenade. I don't know what I'm meaning by that. V1 rocket explodes, uh, firing the machine gun as he's crawling to the left. So that's another emphasis that they put. That is in the game. Now, you know how when you would bunny hop off a, off a building or something like that, off a roof, you couldn't fire your gun on the way down? Like the animation would have the gun put up or, or pull up or something like that. Or when you're, di or when you're diving or you're, you know, you're going back. Excuse me, going backwards. They, now they say anytime your gun is forward, and it's almost always forward, you're gonna fire. So you can fire when you're leaping over stuff. You can fire when you're when you're jumping uh, off a roof or something like that. And a lot of, they showed off all these amazing animations. Like you could do this thing where if somebody's chasing you and you can run into a house and then jump 
spin around on your back and you fall on your back and let's say you got a shotgun, you go bam, 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 while you're on the ground prone and, and while a guy comes around the corner. It was fucking, it was, the, the potential of that is cool. Now, I don't know how that's gonna work in multiplayer. Is it gonna be abused? Is it gonna be bunny hopping all the time? I don't think so. I hope not, but it's just so much more fluid. And they use this example of how they thought, players thought it was annoying or game changers or whoever thought it was annoying that when you, when you crouch down in a corner and you're prone and your feet like hit, you know, you could get knocked off and the animation like pushes your character and then you'll fall off of whatever perch you were on. Well, now that no longer happens and, and they were trying to find ways to make that more realistic. So your soldier sits and prones in a very realistic 360 kind of way um, and that goes a long way. I saw melee weapons in the trailer, so we we're going to see that. Uh, you, you see the dude sliding down the hill, so we kind of have a little bit of that sort of enhanced movement. Uh, not quite jump jets or anything like that, but there is. I don't know if there's shotgun slides. They, they, they say they're still working on the balancing of the shotguns, and they may, you know, look at how that works, but that could be a potential. I mean, look at the way that guy's sliding. Uh, and then we've got that the female with the fake arm or the cyborg. Just a cyborg. From this, anybody screaming, oh, this game, where's our historical accuracy? Shut the fuck up. You should be more mad that there's a cyborg arm in the game than there is a female. Because there actually were women in combat in World War II. I don't know if you know this. Not very many, I agree. But a lot of the resistance fighters. And I'm actually happy we're getting these war stories of untold stories that I told you that they were trying to focus on, and that's probably why you're seeing a few women in here, uh, these Norwegian resistance fighters, and 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 you know, and I saw all they showed is like six seconds of it where she falls in some water, and and I was like, okay, I'm I'm interested in what's going on here. How the hell are they gonna beat the Nazis? I, I have no idea what the story is about, but I am very intrigued, and we're gonna get all the big historical battle kind of stuff, but. I also want to see the untold stories of World War II. This is the fifth game, for Christ's sake, and, and probably the 90th World War II game. It's okay at this point. Um, they also had the radios blaring on the Jeeps, so that returns from Call, uh, Call of Duty uh, Battlefield Vietnam, I think. And so that'll be fun when you're ready. World War II music, you know, fucking blasting while you're, while you're riding that thing and shooting. It's going to be freaking awesome. Uh, the, the way bipods are deployed, or they said there's going to be instant, and I think you see that in the in the trailer. So bipods have been improved, um, LMGs have been improved. Uh, there's a, a, a sort of, sort of character development for your squad, and that's when I didn't quite understand that kind of thing, and I'm a little mixed up on that. <coughs> All right, so, and, and I wrote here, Battlefield not chasing that Battle Royale fad. They're actually evolving their core gameplay experiences and actually experimenting with it in a legit way. You know, it's just so disappointing to me that it, it's like Battlefield, or it's like Call of Duty. It's not even Call of Duty. Why even call it Black Ops 4? It, you, you, you're doing Rainbow Six, you're doing Overwatch, and you're doing Fortnite. That's what you're doing. Where, that's it. Oh, and Zombies. Thanks, you know, I, I, I'm i not into the zombies mode, many of you are, and that's fair, but uh, and now you have uh, uh, zombies, gladiator, gladiator zombies, you know, so I don't know, I, I just think that that's not even a war game anymore, <laughs> uh, and it just doesn't feel right, so, so the evolution is in the wrong direction, here the evolution is every single aspect uh, of what makes this combined arms battlefield experience has been evolved and improved and a step forward, in my opinion, plus new mode. So you want zombies? Well, Battlefield says, we'll give you we'll give you that zombies mode, but we're going to do it in a real war historical way. Not, the, not zombies, but paratroopers and how, what it was like for them on dynamic maps that change all the freaking time and that can evolve and create these little mini stories uh, with you and your buddies. Do you continue to go forward? Um, and you notice he mentioned all the scarcity. That's a big thing in Battlefield 5 that's changing. You're, you're not always going to spawn in. When you respawn, you're not going to have full ammo. You're going to have to go to resupply areas. You're going to have to ask your squad mates for ammunition. You're going to know that you only have, you know, one magazine and, and, and uh, you know, and how do you approach this situation? You, you know, you, they wanted to have that game flow be a little different um, and encourage squad play. So uh, scarcity is there and that's going to show up uh, not only in the co-op mode, but also in multiplayer. 
Customization, like I said, is huge. I wrote down here, it looks like Braveheart. Yeah. <laughs> we even have God of War. God of War makes an appearance. <laughs> and uh, so it's like fucking Battlefield Call of War. Uh, or, God, I'm just mixing all the games together now. Uh, there's face paints. There's jackets. The pants are selectable. I saw one guy with a watch. I don't know if watches are individual or if that was just a part of the jacket, uh, upper body part. I, I, I'm going to go ahead and just expect it's, uh, it's hat. Uh, face, upper body, lower body. Prepare yourselves for that, okay? That, I think, four is the customization. If you get any more than that, then that, that's going to be above and beyond the call of duty, uh, when it's already above and beyond the call of duty. Um, but, yeah, so then they talked about combined arms uh, a little bit more, side narratives. They got that narrative generator in that online cooperative mode. They're, it's the issues of the paratroopers. Um <clears throat> Okay, and then everything that you do in Combine Arms and War Stories will unlock to feed your company. Feed your company new weapons, new unlocks, new badges, new banners, new uh, face paint, new sandbags and customizations for your tanks. It sounded awesome. Um, let's see. So talking, they talked a little bit about that story, a little bit more. So here's what it is. One such war story is you're playing as a young resistance fighter in Norway. It's about saving your family. It's up close. It's personal. It's portraying these human stories that aren't historical. Okay, they mentioned that so many times to try to hammer it into our heads. It's not historical, but it represents what these people might have been going through. And I'm up for it. I, I bought in on it. I, th I thought it was fine. Yeah. It's not historical. Okay. We could do a little different. We could do, we go over the top like uh, Call of Duty does in, in their campaigns. And I've, I've always liked Call of Duty's single player campaigns. Oh, they're so over the top. So I'm ready for it. All right. Let me see if I can break down some more of this for you. What are we on? We're on page two. <laughs> Jesus. I got to have to scan through this. In the core gameplay mechanics, they had four pillars. Squad play, physical and kinetic, war of attrition, variety, and flexibility. So how you let's – ju let's just skip to the important ones. Uh, the physical soldiers, every action requires input. It's physical representation. They're moving away from anything that's abstract. So there's no aura healing. You've got to interact with the ammo. The, like hand, the hand picks up the ammo or your squad mate. You catch it in the air. You pick it up from the ground. Remember what I was talking about, like Far Cry 2? That's in the game. Uh, there's no more holding the spot button and spotting Doritos and then firing at those Doritos. You with your finger not even on the trigger, and then, and, you know, instead it's always on that spotting button. The spotting mechanics are going to be different. They didn't want to share what it is, but I think I inferred from talking to many different people that it's a mark mechanic. You're, you're, you're calling out a specific thing that people need to pay attention to, so it'll be a ping or it'll be a single kind of thing rather than a bunch of Doritos, uh, but I'm not sure. Um, another thing they said is that, you know, you can fire through buildings. I mean, these are some of these weapons are really powerful. And so an example was a squad going up to the second you know, level of the house and getting that LMG and just going, <laughs> and you took out a few of them. And you got hit, hit indicators that you're hitting a, a few of the people in there. So don't worry about not having enough feedback uh, about what you're doing because you will, and they've thought of that. Um, believable reactions, a deep connection to your surroundings is what they said. Um, they wanted to mix up those gameplay loops. Scarcity, I already talked to you about that. Um, Every time you spawn, you're not maxed out. You have to gear up. You have to have this preparation before you hand, head out. And a lot of this stuff is actually starting these resupply areas and these buildable things. It's starting to sound like squad. And that is a really exciting thing for me because I played squad and I fucking love it. It is this amazing simulation and it just simulates these things in war that like, you know, that preparation and then, you know, you're driving a supply truck or you're go trying to reinforce an area and then... <laughs> You know, and boom, a dynamic battle just starts, and it's just so immersive. And this shit is, was already in Battlefield, but now with this stuff and taking cues from that, it's upping it. It's upping it. So where as Call of Duty Black Ops is, is taking from fucking Battle Royale, right, where you got one live, you're going to be walking around for 15 minutes. Sure, it may be factions and sides, right, but you're going to die, and that's it. 
and you have nothing to do. Whereas in Battlefield, you you've got these these dynamic moments, and then you die, and then you respawn on your squad, and then you find ways around it, and you take down that tank with you know. So it's just a completely different experience. I'll, I'll try to calm down on the, the the expectations. But remember, this is partly a comparison video between these two games, uh, so that's why I bring it up so much. So. Um, what else can I give you? The, they're going to change their communication, really give you a wide range of experiences on maps. Um, and they kind of actually embrace some. They said, we like it when players hate our maps sometimes. They didn't say it like that, but they were like, we like it. some players will love and hate certain maps. That's just, that's encouraged because what it does is it says them certain maps cater to certain things. So you're going to have, you're going to have a, you know, a dogfight maps. You're going to have tank oriented maps. You're going to have little hallway operation, you know, little hallway maps. And you're going to have all that kind of stuff in this game too. And they don't want to shy away from that. And then they'll have the mixed maps as well. Uh, Communication on what's coming up in future uh, DLCs. There's always going to be something new and cool coming, and all this stuff is going to be free. I don't see a problem with that. I, I I'm like, wow. I what, what? No, no. EA. What? What is the catch? We'll see. We'll see what the catch is. Uh, it's service focus. See, this is the kind of stuff that that worries me. Service focus, built to last, built for expansion. Uh, and it's smart. That's the way to do it. So I don't know if they're talking about Battlefield V Japan in these tides, and then all of a sudden you'll get Japanese and Japanese weapons, Japanese tanks, and, and then Call of Duty Italy, and all of a sudden you'll see I, uh, Call of Duty Battlefield Italy. Sorry about that. Um, I don't know if that's really what's going to happen, because then doesn't that make Battlefield Six VI and Seven obsolete? Uh, but I know that there's it's going to be stories that they tell along with you in these grand campaigns. Uh, but it sounds like they're setting up that. They're laying the groundwork for all that exciting so sounding shit in the future, whether that's with Battlefield Five or in the future. Okay, uh, physical and kinetic, uh, immersive. I saw an avalanche in the Norway picture. Traversal, uh, low latency. They want to concentrate on that. Wide range of options. Uh, so now you they use this example of jumping straight out of a window. Instead of whacking at that window, like let's say you, you got that window cover, you have to whack at it uh, over and over to break it first and then run out. Well, they said all that stuff is going to be contextual now. If you see a tank rolling up, and that happens in the trailer, you see the tank roll, you just start running for the window. Boom! You will, all, you will jump through it, you know, and, and you won't have to do this and that. And then when you slam onto that ground, you'll take a little bit of damage, but you'll roll forward for that better traversal and the way your character interacts with the terrain. So that alone was really, really cool. And for hardcore players like me, and to get that experience, it's going to be really awesome and a nice uh, gameplay. And you know how Call of Duty Black Ops 4 made this huge thing about their new gun system and recoil system? Well, they... Battlefield is doing that same thing. So that kind of takes that away. They're both improving their guns, and so that's no longer a bullet point, even though it is a bullet point because it's freaking awesome and pun intended. So it's going to be readable, actual recoils, no more like visual recoils, uh, lots of changes to the weapon feedback so that you can learn them and you can and skill. They talked about skill and learning those weapons and making each weapon feel different through that system. So we're going to get a little bit of that. Then they showed some animations. Right, we got this sneak peek into the, the traversal. So running through the water, that the, the little guy's legs are going real high. You know how awkward it is to kind of run through water? Your guy will do that. <laughs> I thought that was fun. And then they, they do all these reactions to the environment. The player stumbles a little bit over uh, you know rocks, and then he puts his body of his weight into the wall when he goes up against the wall. Uh, you could do these little micro jumps if you're running on that kind of you know, looking terrain. If you're running through mud, you're gonna you kind of slip and slide, and that adds a lot more life to the animations. And I I don't think I can show you any of that, but um, what the first thought that pops in your head? I know it just popped in your head now is oh shit, that's gonna mess with my aiming, and that's gonna be oh they just fucked everything. It's gonna be awful. Well, my first impression was I want all that. I don't mind, but they said nope. None of that is going to affect gameplay and aiming. You don't notice them in first person. This is only for the third person ambiance. So they put a lot of they put some people's fears to rest. Uh, it's just a visual look, and and it really brings together this next gen experience of Battlefield Five without affecting the gameplay that you know and love. Um, <clears throat> then they show tall grass hiding a soldier, and how that grass move is moving aside realistically, and that's how others are going to know that you're moving through that tall grass instead of it being, you know, the static thing that it just hides you in some other games and you're just shooting through there. No, it's the, the r grass is going to rustle and stuff when, you, when you're interacting with it. Um, 
Another thing was, you remember what I was talking about, Far Cry 2. Everything, so people get up and close with the characters. So when you're reviving something, they're going to go, they're going to get up in your face. So you get to, and why? Well, not only for the immersion, but it's a clever way to show their customization. You'll see their jacket, you'll see their face paint, you'll see their, their, their goggles or whatever it is, and it creates that deeper connection between these two players that you're healing. You almost feel a connection with that guy when he's like begging and in your face. And and then you kind of want to follow him you know, and, and, and you know be his friend and stuff so i just thought that that was really cool uh i already talked about the ability for you to drag your teams to safety it's a uh, you know operation locker you you'll have an ability to get them out of there um let's see i already talked about anybody can revive there's a buddy revival and then there's the medic the medic could do it quicker and could do it to anybody on the battlefield and it heals them back to full uh if, and that's another thing. It, you can't revive anybody if you're not a medic. Just your own squad. That's why it's called buddy revival uh, or squad revival. Uh, but the medic can heal anybody on the battlefield. I'm not sure enemies. I don't think that's the that's thing. Um, I talked about how that tank rolling through the building, so I'm just going through my notes a uh, little at a time here. It's like Bad Company 2 levels of destruction, you know, and – or. M or more, or maybe not more, because they did talk about how sometimes, you know, they got a little carried away with destruction and shit would be flat. And they don't want to go that far, uh, you know, so the building structure will be taken out, but the skeleton will still be there because of the new system of doing fortifications. So on that second level, you can create that fortification and it looks cool on there or on this level, this hollowed out piece. You've got this fortification that you can build there. So they needed that structure to still stay there uh, for, for the fortification system. <coughs> I already talked about the full 360 control when you're pro prone. Uh, bu uh, going back to, you know, the scarcity and stuff. Every time you kill an enemy, he's going to drop ammo. So scarcity is a bit prevalent. It creates these more epic moments and decisions, what they were saying. Uh, and, and it w shakes up the old gameplay loot. He, he used a specific example. Attacking a flag three times, and you just you, all you have to do is run away, and you fill your health up back to 100% when you're hiding. And then, you, you know, self-heal. But that won't be that way anymore. You, you're going to go and attack a flag. This is your third flag you're attacking but now you're gonna have to re you're only gonna be able to self-heal to a certain extent your your ammo may be low and if you're not picking them up consciously picking up ammo though you should um, then you, maybe you won't push the attack you have to go back and resupply or have your squad support you and I like that that, that that's gonna kind of change a little bit Somebody brought up, what if? What about exp enemies dropping health packs and stuff? So they're like, oh, that's interesting. Well, we're still tweaking. We'll we'll look to see that, but how that affects this this whole new scarcity thing. Uh, so I talked about the uh, fortifications, and I talked about that new kill cam and bleeding out, and what operations are. Depicting historical battles of World War II, uh, na it's narrated as you go through it. So it's split over four fictional days, okay? They're not calendar days. It could be like this at the beginning of the month or at the end of the month. They're not calendar days. They're just four unique and distinct sort of uh, gameplay modes with their own custom rules and map layouts, and that's a grand operation. Now, you're not always going to get that fourth one. A lot of people don't know that. It's actually three. So each day's final result from that first one will impact the start of the following day, be it... Uh, uh, limiting your initial respawns or the types of resources available, the types of vehicles available. So that sounded really cool. Uh, but the fourth day is only a final stand, is what they called it. And you only play that if day three ends in a draw. They were targeting this to occur approximately a third of the time. So you're not going to actually see this every time. It's going to be something special. Uh, and I thought that that was kind of cool. And what is that final stand? It sounded so exciting. It, like the, the ammo is super scarce. Uh, you know, you've got your – that actually gives a little more precedence to melee weapons. And, and so, like, you know, it's that moment in, in – in, uh, what is it? Um, Saving Private Ryan when he picks someone up, he throws it, he runs out of ammo with the pistol, he throws it. That's the kind of stuff you're just going to be at each other's throat. And, and it talks about a moment where it was like 64 players. I'll talk about that in a second. And then this final stand, it got down to like four versus one. And everybody in the operation that's participated in the operation was watching this one guy, you know, trying to take out these four guys. And he did it. And it was such 
an amazing moment, uh, a moment that people were talking about in the office, and I could see that kind of stuff happening, and I want to be that one person. Uh, and so all the, uh, you, st you see the evolution of the game here versus something like Battle Royale. It's crazy to me. This year's Battlefield up against Call of Duty, I've never seen this kind of disparity in, in, in hype and in evolution and excitement between these two, uh, at least in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> It's going to be the best game mode. It's going to have the most replayability. That's what I'm thinking. That's the note I, I took from my personal self. Um, then they talked about they could do grand operations. How would paratroopers affect that? You know, every time you spawn in airborne, you're going to be in an airplane. And you're going to decide when you want to jump out of that airplane and spawn if you're in the airborne. That's going to be so cool. Uh, and then this operation example, you had to take out artillery pieces at first. Then day two, how many artillery pieces did you take out in day one, that side? Uh, if we did poorly, then we're going to have fewer, tic fewer tickets to spawn soldiers, and we'll have fewer vehicles in the next phase, which is like a tank battle or something uh, in, in the next day. Um, Let's see. Day three, one example. No, this is what when he was talking about that that moment. One life only, no respawns, only one mag in your gun, uh, a fight to the last man. Uh, medics can revive and maintain. That makes medics even more important. They can mine, uh, revive people. Your buddies can still revive you too. Remember, you have that buddy healing system. Uh, but squad, what, what that does is it makes squad wipes so much more important. Uh, and you know that they won't be back. You'll get that. It's not just bonus points. It's like, boom, you did a squad wipe, you're a fucking badass. They're not coming back. Um, you got extreme weather, storms for final stand, the intensity, uh, that entire 64 player match is watching those survivors. Dynamic goes, weather is back. No operation mode needed for that, it's everywhere. Um, yeah. RBD, so talking about that gun, the recoil stuff again, they did a whole section on that. Uh, the, it's a clear pattern for the first few bullets shot, uh, moving away from random elements. You will shoot where you aim. They, they kind of noted in, in previous Battlefields, sometimes you'd shoot, and the bullet just doesn't go where it's supposed to go. And, and they, they want to make sure that they fix that. And RBD is gone, whatever RBD stands for. I think it's random bullet displacement or something. Um... And then the scarcity that we were talking about, that's going to balance more powerful weapons versus weaker weapons. There's be more ammo for the weakers and less for the more powerful ones. Um, <coughs> I already talked about LMGs and bipods and the functions for squad reinforcements. You're built, you're getting these points, you can call in things. Uh, I talked about shooting while sliding, shoot on the way down from buildings on that apex and down. All right, where, where are we? On page seven, <laughs> uh, you cannot completely level a building. I, I talked about that. In a couple, you could completely. There's going to be a couple that you maybe can, but here it, they just talked about how that sounded so awesome that you could level an entire level. Uh, but they chested it, and you could just destroy the hell out of it. But it wasn't fun by then. So you're going to be able to do it to some pieces, but not every single piece. They, they have to have areas where they can build up those fortifications and build it back up. So I like the fact that there's going to be base skeletons in these important areas. Um, yeah. So now I'm just going through some of the stuff. Uh, archetypes is the thing that you're going to be doing. Uh, selecting an archetype, recon, paratrooper. Uh, what does that mean? Well, the para that guy will have high agility, high health regen, it's, uh, and I wrote it down, high blast reductions, but very low suppression sensitivity, whatever that means. Uh, I saw his little meters, and that was for the recon paratrooper. Um, and there's going to be different, uh, different things, uh, different gadgets, different special abilities that are unique to that guy. I saw that something else unlocks at level 4 recon, maybe his ability and and different ways that he can run longer or you know stuff like that and then I saw gear and specialization vehicles they're gonna have branching multiple paths that you will see physically change on the tank if you go down this path and then this path does this path your tank will change different uh, parts on it customizing it all in the World War II look five to seven different customization part parts Unique things, I wrote it down. Leaves, sticks, engravings, colors. Uh, tanks have camo, mesh layers like sandbags, bran branches, boxes, grass, all stuff. So, assignments. 
how are you going to lock all this? Well, there's different ways to earn the in-game currency. Not buy, but currency, but in-game currency. I don't know, maybe in the future you'll be able to buy this currency, but the in-game currency, and that's all they said, is the daily orders. So you get three missions every day, and I looked at it, the reward was 1500 Okay, This is way too early because obviously this game is not coming out till November, but that's the number I saw, that you get those daily orders. And then there's also something called special assignments. These are longer lasting ones. It's going to take a while to grind them out. It looks like you'll have four slot assignments at a time for these special assignments. So that determines how you want to play today. Do you want to get 10 kills with the tank? Do you want a dogfight? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do something else? And those rewards that you get, is it going to be 1500 No, those are daily orders. The, it'll be based on the difficulty of that assignment. Maybe you get 5000 or something like that. And then you can spend that 5000 on unlocking the weapon that you want. You want the Tommy gun? Then you can unlock the, the, the Thompson. I'm sorry. And, and uh, you know, and get that right away. So I thought that that was cool. So you deck out your soldiers, your vehicles, and your unlocks the way you want. Armory screen I saw featured across the top. Weapons, vehicles, soldiers, boosts. Boost. What is that? I don't know. That's been in previous games, right? Uh, so flexibility to grab what you want, what you want to focus on. Uh, and yeah. Going back to Tides of War, what do you get rewards. I mentioned you get rewards. You can get new vehicles, new weapons. T they're timed events. You can get dog tag, emblems, face paint, soldier skins, weapon skins. So many reasons to come back and participating in that. And then you could say you were there at the battle of what, at, uh, whatever or at the, the stand of whatever, right? Um, you know, somebody made a, a, a joke. We'll be able to do the like a gold man. You know, the Hollywood Boulevard gold man, gold face paint <laughs> as a joke. And I, I don't think he said no. It's, it's not not like that. But maybe I want it. I want <laughs> I want gold man face paint. I don't mind. Um, I saw with my own eyes. I saw and I wrote it down really quickly. Tank winter body rare. Okay, let me show you this here. Rare. So that's that's one that I would have done this. And then winter grip. Uh, common. So this, I think, is where you're going to get your microtransactions, uh, where it's going to be, you know, uh, you know, let's see here. Uh, micro. This is where I think you're going to get the microtransactions in the visual customizations. Now, is that okay? Is that okay for you if they if they do no premium pass, no loot boxes tied to progression like fucking Star Wars Battlefront 2, but just keep it to visual customization? Is that okay with you? The answer for me is yes. If they do all of these things and make this a gaming a service and constantly add new to the World War II map and, and provide us with all this stuff and I'm having fun, I have no problem spending money on things to make me look unique or, or visual customization. Are they going to be exciting enough to buy? I don't know. I don't know. That That's a question. Maybe they won't make as much money on Battlefield Five, and it'll be a failure. I hope not, uh, for, at least for the suits. It's not going to be a failure because it's going to sell at $60 a pop, maybe more. So, Well, not more. That's another thing. They didn't have these wacky special editions. They did have things that pissed me off. They'd like... The freaking EA access where you spend five dollars bucks a month, you could play it early. Well, if you're a hardcore fan, just get it and then cancel it, <laughs> right? But then one edition comes out a few days before. They've done this as well before. It's just annoying, but that's how they're doing it now. At least there's not forcing you into a two hundred and fifty dollar edition or something, or making you feel like you have to buy that one. So there's a little bit of props to be added for there, even though some of the stuff still so pisses me off. It, well, October eleventh was that. Play first trial. That's what they said. Deluxe edition is October 16th. Standard edition is October 19th. Um, and then they said they're just going to give away free stuff. So they said for ba Battlefield 4 Final Stand, we're going to give that away. Battlefield 1 in the name of the Tsar, that, that's free now. Uh, for anybody that hasn't jumped into those games, they said it's a way to hold you over until we get to those things. So I thought that, that was nice. Uh, we tried to ask about the beta date. It's unknown. They didn't talk about it. They're probably going to save that for EA Plays or e, you know, E3 and announce when the beta comes out, maybe around then, I'm hoping. So I cannot wait to get my hands on this game because I think uh, from all the different things that I saw, these guys get it. What makes war feel and play like a war 
That's what they're evolving. That's what they're focusing on, okay? It makes Call of Duty look as... Uh, the new animations make him look as stiff as a, as a fucking two-peckered billy goat, okay? <laughs> it's stupid. As a as stiff, just stiff as a board, okay? This Call of Duty is going to look ridiculous up against this game with this new animation system that I saw. It, it was amazing. Um, you know, Battlefield, I wrote here, is taking its inspiration from games like Squad, whereas Call of Duty is taking from games like Fortnite. Which do you think will be a better war game simulation? Which is, which is going to feel like that battle more? Um, I, I'm, I'm being honest with you guys. I've never felt... Like, there's been a bigger um, disparity between the Battlefield and the Call of Duty uh, games in a single year. Um, and, and honestly, if any Battlefield deserves to outsell and outshine Call of Duty in pure numbers and revenue, in my opinion, it's this one. Um, unless there's some sort of catch that I haven't seen, uh, this I want Battlefield 5 to go over on Call of Duty Black Ops 4 and, and <clears throat> for everything that I saw. And, um, yeah, I, it, I'm, I'm happy that uh, I just want them to put that three-hour uh, presentation out there. But I pretty much covered almost everything that was in there. Uh, so anything beyond what I guys told you, thank you for sticking it out in this long, boring video that I wasn't. I'm not allowed to show you the visuals. I, I, I don't want to get copyright striked on certain specific slides that I could have showed you and those little video animations that would have been amazing and got you excited uh, in the, the modes and things. So <coughs> sorry for that, but this is a huge info dump that I felt was missing from the Battlefield 5 reveal that really, you know, kind of blew me away. And then when they did the Trevor Noah reveal, I was like, oh, that, I don't know if that came across, dude. Did people see that as a as a win? Uh, I saw it's get, kind of get, getting a lot of down votes. Not not a whole bunch, but maybe that's just the Call of Duty guys pissed off. Uh, you know, I don't know what it is, but um, I saw it. I was super excited for it. I can't wait for uh, Battlefield Five and the return to World War Two because I feel that's kind of where the game really um, started and where it feels the best in that combined arms kind of thing. Not the mode, but the you know the tanks and the squads and the aircraft and all this stuff, and it's not battle royale where you die. You have oh we're battle royale. We have um, sea, land, and air, and then you die, and it's over. And you sit there and watch everything for twenty minutes. No, you're in the battle, and you're making decisions constantly. That intensity is there, and it feels like a war, especially in grand operations. All right, guys, that's my Battlefield Five reveal info dump. All the exclusive uh, information. Trying to take care of you guys. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Which one of these games is going to be for you? Are you going to buy one over the other? Are you going to buy both? Um, and, uh, yeah, what are you excited to see uh, for Battlefield 5? And I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, guys.